Grace Rubert. I'm a Canadian distiller making spirits in England. This is Dave, one of my bosses here at the Shakespeare Distillery. If you're interested in the drinks business or distilling, then this is the channel to subscribe to. So Dave, what are we doing in today's video? So today we're actually making our naturally pink rhubarb gin. Ooh. So let's go. Today we're making rhubarb gin. Our Stratford dry gin forms the base of all of our different gins. So the distillation method for our rhubarb gin is the same as for our Stratford dry gin. For a more in-depth video on how the Stratford gin is made, check out the link above. The iStill 250 has just finished a gin run. So I'll empty it and take out the sight glass and prepare it to make another batch of Stratford gin, which will then be turned into our rhubarb gin. I'll bring the sight glass full of copper packing to the sink in the back. In a tray, I'll dissolve a handful of citric acid powder in some hot water. Then I'll pour in the copper spiral packing material and mix it around a bit and leave it to sit for 15 minutes while I get everything else ready. I'm going to measure out our gentle botanicals for the gin, which are lemon peel, orange peel and rose petals. At the Shakespeare Distillery, our products have a Shakespeare theme in that the ingredients in our gins are inspired by the Tudor period, which is the period when Shakespeare was alive. So we include rose petals because the English rose, also known as the Tudor rose, has come to symbolize England and has been adopted as the national flower since the time of the Tudor kings. No flower says England more than this, which is why we include it in our gin recipe. We call these three botanicals our gentle botanicals because they're vapor infused. They sit in the sight glass on top of the spiral packing material and don't come into contact with the liquid in the pot at all. So when the liquid in the pot is boiled and becomes a vapor, only the vapor will rise up and come in contact with these three botanicals. The rest of the botanicals are put in the pot of the still and are boiled along with the liquid in the pot. Okay, so I'll pour the citric acid solution down the drain now. You might be able to see that the water is now tinged green and the copper packing material is a beautiful soft rose color again. We've cleaned the copper packing so now they're ready to take out any impurities in our next distillation. I'll fill the ice still 250 with water and then I'll add in neutral grain spirit which is 96% alcohol. Now that the still is charged with our alcohol and water, we'll close it up and turn the still on to heat up. It usually takes about 45 minutes for the still to heat up, so in the meantime we can weigh out the rest of our botanicals that will go into the pot. There's fresh rosemary, which is plucked fresh from our little herb garden out front. And there's juniper berries, of course, which is what makes a gin a gin. Lovage seeds, lemon balm, angelica root, coriander seeds, and sage. David will wrap up the botanicals in this cheesecloth with some string, and then he'll take it and put it inside the still, where these two bags will hang from a hook that's attached to the bottom of this column. Here you can see the shape of the still. There's the pot at the bottom leading up to a sight glass packed with copper packing material, which is good for purifying the spirit. In this section is our gentle botanicals. We've left them in this section since we don't want the flavor of these botanicals to be too dominant. The column is then filled with ceramic shards, so when the vapor hits a piece of ceramic, it will cool down and turn back into a liquid and fall back down again. Then it will be heated up again, the vapor will travel up 
and the same thing will happen until we get only the purest spirit reaching the top of the call. The very top metallic part has water running through it, so any vapor that reaches this section will condense and fall back down again. The spirit collection is separated into four sections. The four shots, the heads, the hearts, and the tails. Based on the temperature inside the pot, the eye still will make these cuts automatically. We collect the heads and the tail separately. The hearts, which is the good part, which will become our rhubarb gin, is collected in this 50 liter steel drum. The gin right now is clear, so we've got to make it pink. And we do this by adding rhubarb juice to it. Here are two bags of frozen sliced rhubarb that we've purchased from a local UK supplier. We've left these frozen bags of rhubarb out to defrost for the past two days, so now they're ready to be pressed. This is quite possibly my favorite piece of equipment here at the distillery. It's a hydraulic fruit wine press which we purchased specifically to make our rhubarb gin. I don't really know why I like it so much. I just feel like it's such a simple and elegant solution. Anyways, so we have an inflatable bladder in the middle of this press. Then we put this metal grate over it. The surface of it is very similar to a microplane. And actually, David told me that one time when he was cleaning it, he got his fingernail caught in it and it ripped off. Ouch! So the metal grate encircles the bladder and then we'll load it up with our defrosted rhubarb pieces. Once it's filled up, we put the top on and screw it on tight. There's a hose attached to the base of this hydraulic fruit wine press. So we'll turn on the water which will travel through the hose and fill up the bladder that's in the middle. The bladder will expand, exerting pressure on the rhubarb inside, pressing the pieces to the metal grate, and the juices will run out like so, and we'll collect the freshly pressed rhubarb juice in this white container below. Beautiful, just beautiful. Then David will weigh out the correct amount of rhubarb juice and pour it into the gin we made the other day. He'll add sugar syrup and water to it to get it to the right flavor and alcohol percentage. While the freshly pressed rhubarb juice gives our gin its naturally pink color, rhubarb is very tart in taste, so adding sugar syrup is a necessity here. The rhubarb juice is a natural colorant that is added to the gin after the distillation process. Like other distilleries I've spoken to, who make naturally pink gins using ingredients such as hibiscus flowers, raspberries, and strawberries, this pink color in the gin is unstable over long periods of time and will fade away, especially quickly when stored in direct sunlight. For this reason, we tend to only make a batch of rhubarb gin when we need it and never have too much sitting in storage. While we could use artificial coloring to make the pink color stable over a long period, selling a gin with artificial colorants isn't exactly a great marketing point, so we prefer to keep things au naturel here. Now we just have to bottle it, label it, and it's ready for the shop. We'll just clean up our hydraulic fruit wine press and tuck it safely away until we make our next batch of rhubarb gin. So I hope you guys enjoyed watching us create our rhubarb gin. If you'd like to support the channel, give us a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button. And until the next video, I'm Dave. I'm Rhubarb. Sending you good vibes.
See you next time.